And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. I'm guessing that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say millions. So saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Amen. Verse uh, chapter 21 of Revelation verses 1 through 3. I saw a new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, there was no more sea, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Praise the Lord. Verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. All right, praise God. So the new heaven, the new earth are there to remind us of the expansive scope of the new creation while the new Jerusalem highlights its purpose as a dwelling place for God. Praise the Lord. So in this way, Revelation 21 pictures the entire cosmos and new creation as the dwelling place of God. Right? So then, the picture given in Revelation 21 and 22 fulfills the mission given in Genesis 1 and 2. The progress of this mission can be traced throughout the entire Bible. God used the whole 66 books of the Bible to show us who the true tabernacle of God is and the true temple. Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Behold, I will send my messenger. He shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Praise the Lord. That would be us. Praise God. In Genesis 1 and 2, Eden is the dwelling place of God. You say, no, God's in heaven. No, God is in Eden. Yes. He's in heaven too. God is omniscient or omnipresent, so He's everywhere. But he, that was His dwelling place on earth, right? Yeah. Eden is the dwelling place of God. And God commissions Adam and Eve to expand the boundaries of that dwelling place yeah. so that it will fill the earth. Right. Yeah. right? Just think about this for a second. God can do anything. But he will not rule the earth as a spirit. It's a place for human beings. And so God has to use human beings to have access to the earth, just like Satan does. Well, I don't want to say just like Satan, but Satan mimics that same plan. He has to get somebody to do what he wants him to do. So God's ability to inhabit earth is dependent on the people that are on that earth. Now, we know God can do anything, but He won't because He's already bound Himself by His Word. Exactly. So, with that in mind, uh, God's original call, it seemed to be derailed. His original commission or His original intent mm -hmm. looks like it got blown up, amen, and sidetracked because uh, of unbelief, because of sin mm -hmm. in Genesis 3. So, God continues to establish His dwelling place among the patriarchs. It looked like it's over, but it ain't over. Whatever that original intent of his is, it still is. Yes. He just has to come with another way to do it. Right. The plan is still the plan. It's how we're going to make the plan function that right. is where we're at. All right. So he moves on from Adam, and then he starts working through uh, the patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right, etc. Until the construction of the tabernacle and temple. All right. Then after the destruction of Solomon's temple, the prophets then are anticipating by the Spirit the coming of a new and expanding temple. And those prophecies began to be fulfilled in Jesus and in his body or in his church. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. So 
as, they, as the dwelling place of God, we have to grow until one day we fill the entire heaven and earth, or the entire cosmos, becomes the dwelling place of God. Yes. So when we go back to Revelation, that's what I'm talking about. He starts out by saying there's a new heaven and a new earth, and then immediately he goes to this new Jerusalem, which is the church. Yeah. Yes. Right? The true church, the true Jerusalem that, that uh, Paul talks about. Uh, it, when he's saying that, uh, you know, the, 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 he, she had, he had two wives. One was a spirit wife, one was a flesh wife, yeah. right? So there is a flesh Jerusalem, and then there is the spiritual Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, which is the true spirit. Well, and that's what Revelation is pointing at. Okay, first of all, there's a new heaven and a new earth. Now, God wants to inhabit the entire heaven and earth. That's his mission. That's what he called us to do in, in Genesis 1 and 2. How is he going to do it? He immediately shifts his focus from the new heaven and the new earth to the new Jerusalem because it's through the new Jerusalem that he's going to inhabit yes. Yes. the earth. That's, it's through us that, that make this his dwelling place. Yes. Okay? So, amen. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verses 4 and 5. So he's trying to make, in other words... We know that this is his plan because this is what he told us. So his, entire, his, his ultimate intent is to inhabit the entire earth with his presence. Sure it Praise the Lord. The whole new cosmos, new heaven, new earth is to be God's dwelling place. Yes. Yes. But it can't be God's dwelling place unless we make it. Exactly. Unless we inhabit it. Amen. Yes. So in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, he says, To whom coming as unto a living stone... Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now in Psalms uh, 127 it says, Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. So my building materials are spiritual because God is a spirit. And this is the place of God's rest, man. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Stay with me. First of all, the spirit is what's real. Sure. The flesh is just a sense realm. Yes. So you only can yes. interact with it through a human body. Exactly. In order to get the spirit here, you have to agree with God. Yes. Yes. You have to be in agreement with Him. You have to be doing what it is. I'm not talking about works. I'm just talking about being and functioning the way He intended us to do that, which is through His Word. All right? So look at Psalms now, chapter 72 and verse 19. We'll come back around to this garden thing, but I'm just saying. He blessed... And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. So when we begin to see the Old Testament as an external covenant, and the New Testament as an internal covenant. So one is flesh, one is for the sense realm, and one is for the spirit realm. The first one was only there to point to yes. the second one. Yes. So the only thing we have here, the stuff that we have here is only for one reason, and that's to point us to the Spirit, yes. to where it comes from. Yes. God is our source. So, right. amen? Amen. So, so uh, we have to understand that as, as uh, the New Testament being an internal one, we start then from that knowledge, begin to make the transition, and hear what it is that God is saying to the church, you and me, individually and collectively, yeah. by the Spirit, because He doesn't talk to us through the natural realm. Right. He uses the spiritual way. Praise the Lord. All right, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And we know this is Jesus after Jesus' resurrection. And he's telling His disciples, His believers, His followers, His body, what it is they are to do, right? Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. In other words, do what I've said, what my word says. 
And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Praise God. The mission did not start in Matthew 27 or 28. It started in Genesis 1. Jesus is just picking up on it and reestablishing yeah. what the original intent is. Yes. Amen. The mission didn't begin there. Amen. But the mission is God's heartbeat all the way back from the very beginning. Yes. So the whole earth is filled, is what this ultimate picture is to be, the whole earth being filled with the presence of God. And that fulfills the original intent from the sanctuary in Eden. All right? You say, well, what sanctuary are you talking about? Eden? Eden is a temple. Yes. How do I know it's a temple? Because it's the first dwelling place of God on earth. Yeah. All right, look at Ezekiel chapter 28, in case, in case you're questioning that. Ezekiel chapter 28, 13 through 18. Twenty-eight, thirteen through 18. So thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked upon, and we know in Israel where Jesus talks about they're approaching the mountain, say to this mountain, he's talking about the temple that existed at that time. Here he says, I have set thee that was on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Now, we always talk about this being Satan, but hey, this is Adam. Yeah. Yeah. The mountain of God is not up there. The mountain of God was right there in the garden. Mm -hmm. right. That was the sanctuary. That was the right. tabernacle, if you will. So he said, I'm going to cast you out of the, as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You're seeing God speaking about the spirit that influenced Adam. Right. He's talking about Adam, but he's also talking about the spirit that was influencing Adam, which was not from God. Right. Okay, it will devour thee. It will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary. By the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of them that behold thee. Praise the Lord. So, amen. It can be confusing, but it shouldn't be. We ought to be able to just dumb it down to uh, Genesis uh, 3, verse 24. There's an angel there that God puts there after he puts man out of the sanctuary he puts an angel there to guard the eastern entrance to the sanctuary yes. right so he drove the man and he placed at the east garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life all right so the angel guards the entrance on the east look at Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 6 when he's talking about the temple that comes later then came he unto the gate which looketh toward the east. This is, happens to be the gate that Jesus will enter after his resurrection, by the way. And as he comes, when he comes back into the earth, that's the, the entrance that he makes. I'll let you argue about where you think that temple might be. But I'm just saying, I'm not really looking for something to be built with human hands again. It may be. And it may be an indicator of other things that God's doing, but it's not the thing we're supposed to be focused on. Then came he unto the gate which looketh toward the east, and went up the stairs thereof, measured the threshold of the gate which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate which was one reed broad. Praise the Lord. So the east gate to the temple, amen, is where Jesus enters. Right? The east gate to the original temple is where the angel stood so that nobody could enter. Right, because in there is the tree of life. And anybody that enters there who is without sin is going to bring sin upon the entire human right. race and thereby screw up God's right. 
original intent, which was to fill the earth, amen, with his presence, right? Okay, so uh, in the deepest part or in the midst, it says, of the garden, the sanctuary, was a tree of life. And the fruit of that tree is eternal life, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, both in Eden's temple and the later temple, there is a, it's, it's characterized by the presence of God, right? Mm -hmm. And it pictures the satisfaction of human needs and desires in God's presence. Wherever God was in the original sanctuary or in the Garden of Eden, God, we read it. He's going to take care of all your needs. Whatever you got to eat, whatever you got to have for shelter, whatever you got to have, all these things are yours. Yes. Right? They'll, they'll satisfy whatever your needs are. Yes. And by the way, you look lonely, I'll give you a girl. Yeah. Right? I'm going to give you a bride. Because you're not really good at doing this by yourself. Right. Praise the Lord. So both Eden and the temple are characterized by this presence of God. And God desired, because of his presence, he desires to meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. By Christ Jesus. So in the temple, the deepest part or the midst of the temple, the following. Yes. Am I confusing you with this stuff? Mm -hmm. The sanctuary. What was in it? Well, in the midst of it, just before you get to the Holy of Holies, which is the deepest part, mm -hmm. is the tree of life, the menorah, mm -hmm. the lampstand, yeah. which is fashioned after the tree of life. Yeah. Right? It looks like a tree, grows up with roots, and got branches coming out, right? Yeah. So, praise the Lord. In the midst of the Holy of Holies, or in the midst of the temple, is this... Uh, this tree of life, amen, that leads you, amen, into the presence of God or into the Holy of Holies. Right. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. So, praise God. Stay with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 16 through 18. Length of days is in her right hand. What is he talking about? Wisdom. Wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Praise the Lord. Wisdom. Wisdom in the temple. Wisdom is a tree of life. The wisdom in the temple was the menorah or the lampstand which gave light, amen, God is a light to our path. Amen. He gives us wisdom to know the next step to take, the direction to go, what we should do, how we should do it. He's a tree of life. The tree of life was a model, amen, for this lampstand outside the Holy of Holies, which represented the presence of God, who is a light to the path of His people. And a river of life, amen, flowed out of Eden, right? Out of the original sanctuary, there was a river that flowed out, amen, and it multiplied and became four rivers, amen, as it reaches out beyond the original sanctuary, amen. The abundant life that flows from the presence of God is a multiple life. It's a life that is in multiplication, addition, and, 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 and so forth, amen. Look at John chapter 2, 18 through 22. So you see the similarities between the original temple or the original sanctuary in the garden and then what comes later in a physical form, amen, is still trying to establish this intent that God has at the very beginning. Yes. So then answer the Jews. Now remember, the original temples are just, they're physical stuff, but they're trying to tell us something spiritual. Sure. Something that has somehow, we've missed it. Yeah. We may get the intellectual value of a church building or a temple, but miss the purpose. Amen. Amen. We are all temples. Yes. Praise God. So then Jesus answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. 
Praise the Lord. So you see, this reference is to Jesus as a temple right. in John 2. And it actually develops the scripture of John 1.14. Praise the Lord. If you can go to John 1.14, he says, we know in the beginning, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, Jesus uh, was with God, was God. Amen. And, and he beheld his glory. Verse 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now think about this. What he's talking about here in John 2 is developing the scripture. Right? The God comes to the temple and is filled with the glory of God. That's what Jesus is telling them. You know, that's what the disciples are responding to in John 1.14. So just as the glory of God filled the tabernacle in Exodus chapter 40, so... The glory of God now tabernacles in Jesus. Yeah. We beheld his glory yes. in that tabernacle, amen, that came down from heaven. Yes. Called Jesus, amen. So, uh, look, then just look at uh, Colossians 1.21 and uh, 22. So, okay, we got this with Jesus. We're saying, yeah, okay, Jesus is the temple, that houses the glory of God. He is the temple that they were pointing to all the way back in Genesis 1 and 2. And then the later tabernacle and then the temple. These are all physical things that are pointing to something spiritual that we're supposed to be learning. Right. Instead of trying to build another big temple. Yeah. Let's identify where God is and where he wants to be and what he's trying to do. Amen. So you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Right. Talking about us now. Right. Verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, so that you will be, amen, an extension of John 1.14, right. uh, which is an extension of, amen, the... Uh, yes. Ex, you know, Ezekiel 40, wherever you want to go back into the Old Covenant, where the, test, where the uh, tabernacles and temples were, and then all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2, where God is in that initial temple. He hasn't changed his plan. The plan is the same. The problem is our interpretation of the plan has never got past the physical. We're spirits, and we're supposed to operate by the spirit. We're supposed to be thinking spiritually, not physically. The reason the Jews lost is because they just wanted to make a really nice temple. Not realizing they were ultimately to be the temple. So to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you not only are the temple of God, and he wants to fill you with glory, his presence. He wants to make you the holy of holies. About it. Come on. Praise God. What was the Holy of Holies for? The priests would minister, yeah. amen, whatever the needs were of the people, and he would do it from just outside the Holy of Holies. And once a year on the Day of Atonement, he was allowed to go in to the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was, and God would say, you did good or you didn't do good. Right? If you did good, he blessed, he come back out, the people were blessed, they were people were healed, people were delivered, right. blessings came, and so on and so forth. If he didn't come out, it was just a mess. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, so if we now are the holy of holies, then God wants to burst forth into the world. Amen. In the form of an incarnate God. Amen. As he did in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Jesus ultimately had us born again of the Spirit so that God would incarnate and manifest in you. Jesus' whole purpose was not just to go around doing miracles and so everybody could say, wow, what, what a deal. This is Jesus. No, it was just a man filled with the presence of God. And then God flows from that man's awareness of God being there and whatever needs are met. It flows just like it did from the Holy of Holies, which was God's uh, dwelling place on earth uh, in all these centuries and millennia past. From the garden all the way through. Praise the Lord. All right, so 
ultimately, us being born again means that once more the Spirit of God has a dwelling place and a place where He can incarnate and manifest. Something He can manifest through. Right. Praise the Lord. All right, John 1.51. Now, what's interesting about John 151 is John 151 is alluding to, John, uh, to Genesis 28 and verse 12. In, one, in, in John uh, 151, he says, He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the, not the Son of God, the Son of Man. Yes. What's he saying? You can see the temple. Yes. Yeah. You're going to see what the real temple is, what the true temple is. All right, what he's doing, he, he's, he's alluding to Genesis chapter 28, if you can go there now, Suzanne, Genesis, uh, Genesis 28 and verse 12. And remember, this is Jacob, and he's in a really trying time in his life, and he's crying out to God. And he opens his eyes in this dream, he's laying on a pillow, his altar, he looks up in the spirit, and he sees angels ascending and descending upon him. He gets a revelation. Uh -huh. This is a temple. I'm in a sanctuary. Yeah. Because that's where God is. Yeah. He said, I did, God was here and I didn't know it. Yeah. So he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and top of it reached the heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Praise the Lord. He has this revelation that this is a temporary altar, a temporary sanctuary. Amen. And that is what brings heaven to earth. God has to have somebody that he can get to, and it has to be in a sanctuary. It has to be a temple, because that's where God lives. That's where God abides when he's on earth. He hasn't changed the plan. So Jacob's small sanctuary is pointing forward not only to a temporary Jerusalem temple, but ultimately to a permanent temple built by Christ. How does Christ build the temple? He has to die. And then he's resurrected. And because of that resurrection, there can be millions, billions of temples. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. John 4, verse 21 through 26. See, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to simpl simplify this, but I'm just saying, we make this thing about yes. all sorts of little skirmishes. Yeah. No, there's one battle. Yes. There's just one battle. It is. And there's a lot of ways that we can fight this yeah. battle, but the end result has to be the same. Yes. Yeah. No matter what it is we're doing, it has to be for the purpose yes. of revealing God in His temple. Understand what I'm saying? It's the intent of the commander. It goes all the way back to what I was talking about in the military. Okay, your, your, your command is to take that city, take that town. Well, they don't want it taken. For some reason, they don't want to just give it to us. And the plan that we had, you know, to throw uh, a, a few mortars in there and then just rush the place ain't going to work because there's more of them than we thought. And they've got some artillery of their own. The plan is still take the town. But now we've got to come up with another plan because the one we started with ain't working. And that's what God is trying to show us in our lives, the challenges that come. The purpose is always the same. For you to be the temple of God so that God can be manifest, so that He can release His favor, His love, His commitment, so that you can have the desires of your heart, so you can have your needs met, and you can be a need meter. Praise God. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither worship, neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem, worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Praise the Lord. God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah comes which is called Christ, when he comes, he'll tell us everything. Jesus said unto her, the guy that's talking to you yeah. is him. Yeah. 
I'm telling you everything you need to know, right? So the true worship is not in a physical temple. Not made with hands. But it's the Father through Jesus Christ. It's being able to reach the Father through Christ. That's true worship. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. The temple of Jesus' physical body was destroyed at the cross. Yes. Amen. So the curtain that separated God from humanity was also destroyed. Yes. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. So he's... He's not talking about that physical structure anymore, not the temple in Jerusalem. He's talking about humanity. Mm -hmm. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, mm -hmm. into the presence of God by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Mm -hmm. Not through the keeping of the commandments, not through everything else, but by what Jesus has already accomplished. Amen. Yeah. Which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Yeah. And having a high priest... Over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Now, what did that what happened to Jesus when he was resurrected? He said, Don't touch me, Mary. I have to go to my father. Why? Because he had to sprinkle the blood on all of those utensils, on everything that was in the original temple, the true temple, amen. Yeah. That Moses yeah. built the earthly temple after. Yes. He's telling us. This temple, all the utensils, all of the things that represented, amen, spiritual truth in a physical way, Jesus has sprinkled this new temple in all of its workings, amen, with his own blood so that it now is pure, amen, yes. and our bodies washed with pure water. Yes. Praise God. So while Jesus' death destroyed the temple curtain, it opened a new and living way through the curtain. Yes. So, what, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not arguing with people that want to talk about the, the new temple in Jerusalem. I'm just saying, I don't care. Right. I mean, it may, it may be significant in the sense that it's speaking to people who know nothing, right. that it will, it will cause them to look back to God and, and so on and so forth, and it will set up the time frame by which God's going to move in the last days. But it really is it's, it's, it's not significant at all because he's not talking about it. That's our flesh that wants to continue to do what the Jews have always done and make it about a physical building somewhere when Jesus has destroyed the whole workings of that and that we're pointing to the reality which is now us. So we should, if we're going to look for God, look unto you, amen, right? Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. What was Adam and Eve's problem? Why didn't the sanctuary get to remain where it was? Because they didn't have full assurance of faith. Amen. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. What was wrong with the conscience? Consciousness of sin. Yes. They had no sin consciousness until they failed. Yes. Then they no longer could be a temple, and they could no longer be the dwelling place, or it could be in the dwelling place of God. Right. Praise the Lord. So, and our bodies washed uh, with pure water. Thank the Lord. Amen. All right. Mark chapter 14, verse 58. I wasn't lying, Suzanne. Lots of scriptures. But I can't, you can see, I, it's hard enough to try to keep everything together with but without the, all of the scriptures, then it just becomes like, what happened to him? <laughs> Lord, he was on something besides chicken last night. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God for the chicken. It saved me. Pretty soon. But we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I'll build another made without hands. So Peter said, what? A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. Yes. So the temple laid desolate for two days. Jesus. Yes. He was the original. He was the true temple right. at that point. He laid desolate. Now we talk about 
him saying the temple will be destroyed and so on and so forth. That's a physical temple. It's only playing out a part that Jesus had already fulfilled. It's destroyed. It's of it's no use anymore. Well, the temple of Christ lay desolate for two days. And then on the morning of the third day, we'll talk about this more next week. Right? I mean, we know what happened, right? He, he was resurrected, right? Yeah. God is raising this temple, yeah. amen, yeah. hallelujah, and he's going to fill it with yeah. all of his glory. In the last days, this happens. Now, we are in the third day. We're in the morning, hallelujah, of the third day. The true reality of what all this scripture is talking about is now to be fulfilled in us, the body of Christ. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. The temple lay desolate for those two days. The third day, it rises again. Amen. And again, it's filled with all of His glory. It's not a natural structure, not a temple made with hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's one that's made of God. Amen. By the Spirit. Yes. That was the mission from the very beginning. Yes. Yes. It's not something you come up with as an afterthought or plan B because plan A didn't work. Right. Plan A will work. Yes. Just a question of how long it's going to take before people will get the yes. clue. Yes. Praise God. So a river of life. Right? It flowed from the presence of God yes. in the sanctuary of Eden, mm -hmm. the initial one. Yes. Right? Yes. Then Jesus offers living water to a Samaritan woman in John 4.14. 4, and Jesus, yes. he suggests that Jesus is the beginning, yes, is. the beginning form, amen, of the new temple from which the true life in God's presence proceeds. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 37 through 39. John 7, verse 37 through 39. Now, just remember what I just said. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, out of his innermost yes. being, out of his holy of holies, right? Yes. The midst, in the midst, in the innermost part of the yes. temple is where that river flowed from. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that's what he's talking about. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. All right? Look at verse 38 again. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being, yes. out of his heart, will flow yes. rivers of of living water. Amen. Yes. Jesus is speaking of the prophecy of water flowing from the temple in Ezekiel, in Joel, and in Zechariah. And I'm not going to go there for the sake of time, but you can go and find them. Every one of them prophesy of the river flowing, yeah. amen, from out of the temple. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So the, the heart or the innermost part yes. of that temple, Jesus, the original. Yes from which flows a river of living waters, right, is Jesus himself. Yes. The Holy of Holies, which has now become us, the body, yes. the Holy of Holies. Acts chapter 2, verse 32 through 38. Now remember, we're still talking about the new heaven, the new earth, and then the dwelling place of God, which is the temple. Mm -hmm. What does God want? Ultimately, he wants the whole heaven and the whole earth to be his dwelling place, yes. to be his temple. So earth will be identical to heaven. You wouldn't know the difference between heaven and earth. This Jesus God, have God raised up where we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter answered said, Repent, change your mind, be baptized into Christ, or enter into this reality. One of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, so for your old Adam to be dealt with, and you will receive 
the Holy Spirit that lives only in the Holy of Holies. What was in the Holy of Holies? We, we, we say it was God. Well, it was the Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. That's what it was. The same thing we have received. The same thing that was in Jesus. God Almighty. Praise the one. I mean, the one who wants a dwelling place. That will fill the entire earth. Praise the Lord. So Jesus' death and resurrection births the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. And the temple of Eden begins to be fulfilled in this new creation, the temple of Jesus, you and I. You still, praise the Lord. You still with me? All right. Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 53. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. He died, right? His temple was destroyed. And rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Tearing the temple veil, amen, and shaking the entire cosmos. The entire heaven and earth is shook. And bodies are coming up out of the ground. It's like earthquakes and all this stuff is happening, amen, because of this particular case. There's a new Adam, a new creation. And the special presence of God in the Eden temple became located in Christ. And since we are now the body of Christ, we are now the holy of holies, the presence of God. Christ in us and we in Christ. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Praise God. What? <laughs> know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? And you can just say, know ye not, your body is the temple of God, yes. who is the Spirit. Yes. Amen? Which you have of God. You're not yours anymore. Right? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Yes. Yeah. Old Testament prophecies of a temple are now fulfilled in the church. Amen? All that God was planning. Yeah. This is it. Yes. It wasn't any of that that we've made yes. it all about. It's always been about this. Yes. Praise the Lord. So it's this old Testament prophecies all about the temple being established and so on and so forth is fulfilled in the church. The result is God's presence is in his true temple. Yes. Praise the Lord. So just as Adam and Eve were supposed to be nourished by God's word, if they'd obeyed the word, they'd have had things forever. They'd have never had to do anything but pick and eat, right? We grow by the word of God. People say, oh, you don't need the Word of God. Read the Bible, man. I mean, that's how they screwed it up. And people today say, well, it doesn't work. It won't work if you don't work it. It won't work if you don't have a clue about why, how it's supposed to work. It's, it works because you stay faithful to it, even when it doesn't look like it's working. Yes. Yes. Out of your belly, out of your innermost being, out of your holy of holies, amen, will flow... <laughs> The Holy Spirit like rivers of living water. It flows. The flow of God's presence. The flow of God's provision yes. is in us. We're yes. looking to get somebody else to pray for me and get that. No, you have it if you're aware of it. All that you have need of is in here in the Holy of Holies. Praise the Lord. You are the sanctuary of God. You are the garden that everybody's talking about trying to get back to and we are it. Praise the Lord. It started in a garden. It ends in a garden. Yes. It started in a sanctuary. And it ends in a sanctuary. Yes. Just not the one we thought. Just not the way we thought. Yes. Praise God. Leviticus. Holy. Chapter 26, verse 11 and 12.
See, if we get through all of this, and then next Sunday I can just get up and say, He's risen! <laughs> Let's have communion. Praise God. Right? And those that aren't here, well, they'll have to figure it out or get the table. And I set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you. Sounds like the garden, doesn't it? He was walking in the midst of, and will be your God, and you'll be my people. Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27. Uh, 36, verses 26 and 27. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. Now, we read these things and we just think, okay, well, he's going to make me think different. No, he said, I'm going to give you a new inner being. Yes. The innermost part of you is what I'm going to change. And in that innermost part, I'm going to put my spirit. Yes. Yeah. And I'll take away the stony heart uh -huh. out of your flesh, and I'll give you the holy of holies. Yeah. I'll give you a heart. Praise the Lord. I'll put my spirit within you yes. and cause you to walk yes. in yes. my word. And you will keep my judgments and do them, unlike Adam and Eve. Yeah. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. Praise God. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, walk in them, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. See, we are the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy that focuses on God's special revelatory presence dwelling in His people. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 58, uh, 8 through 12. Praise God. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Thy health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. This is exactly what happened Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. A garden. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you're acting like God. Yes. Right? You're, you're meeting the needs of people. Yes. Right. Out of you is coming the source that they need. The, the, right. the clothes, the food, the, the love, the friendship, the prayer, the whatever it is. Right. Praise the Lord. They that shall be of thee shall build old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Praise God. Praise God. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. Is this making more sense yes. than just reading it and thinking this is all some abstract, right. weird thing that, you know, we got to go build another building or do this or do the other. Amen. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth up into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God yes. through the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We, yes. the church, as the yes. temple, fulfill God's intention yes, for the expanding of the garden temple yes, in Genesis 128. Yes, yes, Multiply and fill the earth. Mm -hmm. Have authority. Take dominion. Yes. All that, right? Yes. And what happened? Unbelief led to failure. 
Eve twisted God's word. She was still using the word. She just twisted it to fit her situation, her feelings. Well, it worked for Tammy, but, you know, she's not married to my husband, right? Yeah, well, it, it worked for Sally, but, you know, she's, she's been in church for 30 years, 40 years. Praise the Lord. No, it works for everybody if you stay with it. The emphasis was, and still is, belief in God's word is the only way to multiply image bearers. We were created in the image of God, and the only way to multiply that is by continuing to believe what the Word of God says, and act on it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4, verses 15 and 16. Now, it gets interesting here, because, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. And remember, we just talked about we're stones being fitly formed as the temple, right? The body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Praise God. Amen. So here's, here's what he says. We grow up into Christ, right? Into the temple of God. How? By speaking the truth in love. Growth, maturity, power, resources, they're only possible by constant, ongoing exposure to the Word of God through each other. That's why we need to assemble together. Because you're not going to get it from somebody outside. Outside you're going to hear, did he really say you'd die if you ate that up? Oh, maybe... Hey, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe it's all right to just eat half of the apple. Yeah. No, it's here yes. that we need to interact. Yes. Praise the Lord. We get it from each other, not words of human wisdom. But God's purpose and mission from, from the very creation is that His dwelling place fill heaven and earth. Yes. Matthew 12 and 6 says, in this place, Jesus said this, in this place is one greater than the temple. Mm -hmm. He was given us a, a warning, a, 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 an advanced knowledge. Look, you, you, you're talking about how great this temple is. And he said, you're looking at one. Right. You're looking at a temple greater right. than this thing you're talking about. There's one here that's greater than the temple. There's several here greater than the temple. Praise the Lord because the temple was just a picture of something yet to be. The new temple, both spiritual and physical, is us. We are first spiritual through the spirit resurrection. We've been made spirit, right? New creation. We're the temple. No, you're not. You're the temple of God. You are kings and priests who minister with the things of the temple. Praise the Lord. Who's, let, let, let's think about this. This is God talking, and he said, whoever sins you, can, you forgive, yeah. I forgive. Right. Why? Because you have that position yes, in the earth. Yes. I've given it to you. So whomever you forgive, I forgive. Yeah. You're the priest. You're the temple. You're the holy of holies. You're the possessor of the presence of right. God. So whatever you forgive, right. I'm bound to forgive. Yeah. Right. Are you realizing how powerful this thing is that he's trying yes. to get us to understand? We have... The ability to be God in the earth. Oh, you say, oh my God, blasphemy. No, that's what Jesus said, yes. and they crucified him for it. Yes. And he said, now you now us. Yes. are the true temple. Yes. 
the ministers of God's grace and forgiveness and mercy and, yes. and provision and all that God is. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right? Yes. You lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. Yes. Only God can heal. That's right. Whom you forgive, I forgive. Uh -huh. Prophesy. Yeah. Tell me something I don't know. Yeah. Right? That only God knows. Right. You have the gift of prophecy. Yes. Paul said, I would that you all prophesy. Yes. Whom you deliver. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Right. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Yes. You're, you're, you're speaking for God. You are God's are. presence are. in the earth. See, Adam's failure as a priest in the sanctuary of Eden was the result of his failure to believe and act on what yeah. God had said. Yeah. What makes us successful? By believing what God says and then acting on it. Yeah, right. Not saying I believe what he said, but it doesn't work for me. No. No. That don't sound like a temple. No. It doesn't sound like God. It sounds like Adam and Eve yeah, thinking there must be some way that I've missed here and if I could just figure out yeah. all the questions and answers then yeah. I could be like God. Yeah. You idiot. Yeah. You are We're God's in the earth. Yes. In the yes. earth. Your own religion tells you, Jesus said, that you are God's. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. They didn't act. They didn't believe. And they were no longer in the temple. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they failed to multiply and expand God's presence or God's temple. Right. So now we're the church. The true Adam. Yeah. True Israel. Yeah. True temple. Yeah. True garden. Yeah. And the blessing pronounced on Israel yes. from the tabernacle belongs to us. Yes. If you can believe. <coughs> Amen. From the tabernacle, it's ours. Amen. As we extend God's tabernacling presence. Right. Huh. And if you believe God's words, these are words for you. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. This is what they said to the priests in the temple. This is your blessing if you believe, see. Yeah. The Lord bless thee, keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Give grace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Psalm 61 Verses uh, 1 through 7. No, excuse me, Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 67, it's the whole uh, Psalm 67. It's got seven verses. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among the nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Sounds like expansion to me. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. All the people. His dwelling place is filling the earth. All the people are being exposed. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Last scripture again, back to Revelation 21, verse 1 through 3. Revelation 21, 1 through 3. Praise God. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. First heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, 
The tabernacle of God is with men. And He will dwell with them. And they shall be His people. And God Himself shall be with them and be their God. Hallelujah. That is the commander's intent. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you this morning, mission accomplished. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is finished and was finished before the foundation of the world. It's just up to us to walk it. To walk it out. Amen. Glory to God. To plant the flag, so to speak. Amen. It is our victory. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. Amen. Give him another hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. 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 So remember, next week, communion and it is finished. Praise God. God bless all of you. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you all back next week. Have a great week. You are the temple. Amen. Let God flow like a river. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.